we're doing a short presentation on the American Indian Student Success Success Service here at Montana State University. Uh, my name is Lisa Perry, and Nicholas Rostick is also joining me from the the Student Support Service Office. Um, so welcome everybody who who's you know whoever is able to join us today. I appreciate you guys taking time out of your day to uh, hear a little bit about our services, and then also just um, you know take some time to um, you know learn a little bit, and then. Uh, just uh, I'm hopeful we can at some point uh, visit and, you know, maybe you'll be able to come in, you know, take part in our, our opportunities that we have through our student services. So um, today's talking points, uh, we're going to do quick staff introductions. We'll do a little history of the American Indian Student Success Services, uh, our current daily support through our, our office, as well as some scholarship opportunities. And then we'll talk about the American Indian Council and then other student clubs. Uh, available for native students um, and then also the, the American Indian Hall, the, the 21 million dollar facility that we got coming up. We'll talk a little bit more about that and then also we'll end with uh, native pathways to success orientation and then uh, we'll just continue moving forward from there. So we got some really cool things that we're going to talk about today, but I think one of the, the the more important factors is, you know, making sure that you know how to get a hold of us. And so we'll share a little bit of um, contact information at the end as well, too. So. Uh, staff introductions. My name is Lisa Perry. I am an enrolled uh, member of the Eastern Shoshone Tribe. I come from Wind River Indian Reservation. I've been at MSU for about uh, eight, going on nine years now. So I've been in my current role as the uh, director of the American Indian Student Support Service going on four years now. I've been with the Student Support Service a uh, total about six, six years. So um, I popped around campus a little bit. So I was able to get some um, uh, you know, experience around campus, including the admissions office as an admissions evaluator. And so, yeah, a lot of great things happening at MSU. I'll go ahead and let Nick introduce himself and then we'll come back to uh, a couple of the other positions that we have. Yeah, thanks, Lisa. So uh, you can see my name in my picture there. Uh, I just remember um, being a prospective student. Um, I didn't uh, really get, didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't know I was going to actually go to college until about maybe my senior year and there was just a, a ton I didn't uh, realize I kind of went into that process. Um, I came from, you know, small community. Um, I didn't know you had to have a major when you came to college. I didn't know what the curriculum, you know, plan of study, all that. But uh, hopefully through the presentation, you'll get a sense of like what Lisa and I get to do every day um, is we're, uh, we're here for our students, over 700 students. Uh, are close to that. Um, and so yeah, that's a little bit about me. I, and then I don't know if Lisa, you know, talk about our vacant outreach coordinator and we have a student worker, that's Holly. So um, I got my undergraduate degree here at MSU. I was pretty involved with uh, a lot of different student groups. Um, and I, I, yeah, it's a great job, great gig. I get to come to campus and hang out with students every day. So that's a little bit about me. Yeah, we were very fortunate to get Nick on, on staff, uh, you know, as as one who who has very you know knowledge, is knowledgeable about everything that happens at MSU and uh, you know just uh, really invest are invested in the community you know so I think it's been a privilege for us to have Nick on campus. Um, a couple other positions that we have we have an outreach coordinator uh, that is vacant right now. It was um, uh, the role was originally Rita Sand. Rita Rita was also a, a like a, a counselor as well. And so she just retired this last summer and we, you know, we were sad that she retired, but, um, you know, obviously with some of the, you know, uh, things that are going on, you know, nation or worldwide, the pandemic and, you know, those kinds of things kind of limited her, you know, just uh, being able to get out and travel. And plus, she, you know, just had some grandkids that she wanted to spend some more time with. And so she took, you know, took the time to think about it and she decided to retire. Uh, she would routinely go out to all the, the reservations in, in the state of Montana and, and regionally and visit, uh, you know, within schools and classrooms. And so she got to know the state pretty well. Uh, she did a lot of recruitment, met a lot of great people, a lot of counselors, guidance counselors, uh, staff at different schools. And so she, and we're going to have some big shoes to fill, you know, when we, when we are able to fill that position. So um, we'll have somebody coming on hopefully within the next year to fill that role. Uh, we do have a student um, uh, student uh, employee on, on our staff as well. It's Holly Old Crow. She's from the Crow Tribe. She's actually in her last semester right now, and hopefully, uh, fingers crossed, she'll be heading off to law school here in the next year or so. Um, 
she's been a huge asset to our, our our program as well just you know making sure that we have you know somebody to help us again you know we have close to 700 native students at msu and just nick and i you know that's probably not a very good ratio uh two to 700 so you know holly jumping in there with us <laughs> it's been a huge advantage for us to you know take you know help have her help us along and just kind of get us going in the right direction so yeah um so there's you know we have there's three of us uh you know hopefully four in the next year we have also, the Native American Studies Department that we really didn't uh, put in the staff introductions, but there's a, a whole cast of uh, individuals in the Native Studies Department that help support what we do in this efforts that we, uh, you know, help with the Native student body, whether that's, um, you know, book scholarships, scholarships, um, you know, helping uh, facilitate some of our uh, events uh, throughout campus and online. So we have um, a great uh, uh, um, uh, head of the Native American Studies with Walter Fleming. Lisa Stevenson is our business manager. And we just hired a, a, a office uh, coordinator, uh, Patrick Jeffers. So we got a good staff there too, as well. A uh, little bit history of the American Indian Student Support Service. Um, I'll let Nick go ahead and jump in and he can talk a little bit about the history and then, um, then we'll just keep moving forward. Yeah, so it, it's fascinating, uh, even you know, being an alum, uh, if you, you know, you're thinking about making MSD your home. So the picture here, this gentleman is Dan Voyage. He uh, is a non-native gentleman. Uh, he he uh, actually commuted uh, from Livingston uh, in the early days. Um, and the student center I'm actually sitting in, I wish I could have taken a little bit of a panoramic, but there are actually murals uh, on the walls here. Um, there's one on the wall right behind me. Uh, when the center opened, um, you know, there were conversations that needed to be had about what to do with um, our Native students. And when Dan first started in 1966, I think there were only six Native students on campus. And you can see the chart here of the progression uh, through the decades. Um, and that was a, that was very much uh, a statewide, a community-wide effort. Um, there was a commitment from every president on down, you know, that uh, Montana's Native, you know, communities wouldn't, wouldn't be forgotten. Um, you know, from Michael Malone to uh, uh, Bill Teeth was a huge influence in the tribal college movement. Uh, so, you know, uh, to trace that along, um, it's kind of cool to think Dan was actually the director for about 30 years. Um, and we've only had five directors in, a, in almost the 50 years that we've existed. And Lisa being the first woman, uh, that's, that's really cool. When they when they decided this, you know, Lisa mentioned our department who we are housed under. When they first uh, kind of were trying to figure out where to put us, they actually housed us under international programs, which that's kind of an irony if you think about it. Um, then from international programs, we were put into the uh, anthropology department, and there was a concerted effort to try to see, you know the. the thinking, conventional thinking was like, well, you guys are a student success office, maybe you guys need to be under the Yarnell Center or under this other thing. Um, but uh, Walter, uh, Jim Burns, another director at the time, like, well, because of the unique cultural, uh, you know, needs, constraints, or sometimes with that cultural connection, it, it's best for our office to be housed under Native American Studies. And so, like Lisa said, Dr. Fleming is our, is our director, our department head. We have a great relationship with them because there are sometimes just things that, you know, uh, that Lisa and I need to do working for our students that sometimes, you know, uh, somebody across campus may not completely understand. So um, that's a very storied history. And, you know, we're going to see some of that later in, in the slides here, but that's, you know, a little bit about who we are. And um, yeah, maybe I'll just stop there. At least we can move on maybe. Thank you for the uh, background there, Nick. Um, so some current services, uh, and Nick and I can both share our experiences with this, but um, uh, currently we are housed in the Wilson Hall, uh, the lower level of uh, Wilson Hall, room number one. So as you can see uh, in the top left picture, that's kind of a, a you know stepping back, you walk into the room, that's kind of what it looks like. Nick mentioned some of the murals uh, in the picture there you can see. Um, and then I think it's really important to acknowledge, you know, just the, the history and the legacy that, you know, how many students have come through this room and, you know, you always get, uh, uh, you know, the alum who come back in and they're like, oh, wow, you know, I, I'm 
I remember this room. I remember studying right there. I would sit by that mural and I would, you know, plug my laptop in and I, I would study or, you know, they would come in and they would just, you know, be able to connect right away because this was home away from home for them. And so the, the room, you know, I think it's a huge uh, impact and it's a legacy room at this point. And so I think it's really, it's, it's really cool to have, you know, a lot of people walk in and just, you know, look at the murals and it takes them right back to when they were a student or when, you know, they were here at one point in time. Uh, and so, uh, I'll let Nick talk a little bit about some of the tutoring services and then um, also just, I, you know, one of the biggest things that I want to mention for the student support service is, you know, we're here day to day helping students on the ground uh, with anything and everything that students need help with, whether that's, you know, making sure that they have, you know, babysitting situated or whether that they have, um, you know, financial aid situated. Uh, a lot of times students come in, you know, not having enough funding to pay for their uh, bill. And so Nick and I are usually trying to connect scholarships, you know, at the at any point in time throughout the year and making sure students are aware of that. A lot of times we're helping students get connected with counseling, psychological service, because, you know, there might be something going on at home students need, you know, that additional support. And so a lot of times Nick and I are, you know, sitting in our office and our doors are open all day, you know, as long as we are able to uh, visit one on one with students. That's our our pride is, you know, making sure that students have somebody to come and talk to and, and just making sure our doors open. And, you know, if we're not there, you know, students aren't getting the help that they need. And so if that's one thing that I want to share is, you know, making sure students know that our services are always available. We're always um, you know, available in some fashion or other to make sure students are getting the needs met that, you know, that you have. Um, and so any question is not, you know, it, it's any question, ask it. If you have any thoughts that you might you need clarification on, I think that's one thing that we need to really, um, you know, make sure that, you know, our, we're, we're being you know, addressing is making sure students get things situated. Hopefully before classes start in the fall, you know, we do have students who come into the semester and are just, you know, unorganized <laughs> and don't know what's happening. And so that's where Nick and I literally like have to sit students down and be like, okay, where are you at with your financial aid? Where are you at with your registration? Do you have housing? And so those are some of the things that, you know, we literally have to take steps back on and to kind of help coach students through making sure that they have everything set and ready to go. But once students get going and they start getting going and, you know, just hitting the ground running, you know, that's where we get to help students, you know, throughout the semester, whether that's um, the tutoring, you know, time management, you know, students might need jobs on campus. We can help, you know, with some of those kinds of things. Uh, but there's a lot of cool things that happen in the student center. Uh, Nick and I are always, you know, encouraging students to get involved in some form or fashion. And so I think um, in addition to that, we do a lot of other things uh, throughout the semester. And some things aren't necessarily um, uh, on our on our job to do list or our job duties. But, you know, those are things that we really appreciate. And I'll let Nick talk a little, little bit about the tutoring services and some of the events that he's actually helped. Uh, spearhead and get going in terms of uh, American Indian Heritage Day and just different things that he's helped do throughout the semester or throughout the academic year. Yeah. Um, so, you know, like Lisa said, we're and you see the student center a little bit. We're all about, you know, recruitment, you know, which is we get to do really cool presentations like this. But, our, you know, Lisa and I, you know, we're on the boots on the ground. We're, you know, recruitment, retention, and graduating. And so the middle picture here, um, you see the, the two uh, gentlemen here. Uh, the kid on the, the right, the, the blonde one, his name is Max. Uh, Max uh, started this tutoring program. Uh, it was very practical at first. You know, he, you know, he, he has a heart. He, you know, he has a heart for serving and a heart for just seeing others do well. And so... He, he introduced himself to Lisa and then eventually he came to me. Um, he was like, here, how can I help? You know, I, I'm aware that I, I have certain, a certain privilege or maybe I, I've had just certain uh, access to resources that a lot of the, my peers may not ha have had. And so Max came, um, we started getting him plugged in to our students. You know, he was able to tutor chemistry, physics, English, Spanish, uh, math. And, uh, you know, part of the, the way we work our tutoring and a lot of our program is we want it to be immersive. You know, we want our, you know, to be a part of being good hosts. Um, our students, you know, being from the host, you know, tribes of, of Montana, like, you know, part of that is welcoming others into our community. And so we invited Max into some of our uh, programming, you know, some of our community events. And one of those was a bingo night. And, Native people take bingo very seriously. Um, 
And so he connected with the older man and the gentleman on the left. That's Dan. Dan actually is a veteran. He did, uh, he did a tour in Afghanistan, I think. He's a non-traditional student. He has a family here and, you know, probably a kind of an unlikely couple coupling there. But um, Max was really getting into bingo. He didn't win that night. Uh, and the prize that night was a crock pot. And so Max went home, Dan went home. And then the next day we, we come back to the student center and Dan has a brand new crock pot for Max. Um, and so, you know, that's just, you know, that's, that's the kind of the human side of the tutoring, but we have seven tutors. Um, and because of the work we've done with Max, you know, he's a Truman Scholar. We have a couple of Truman Scholars. We have Gates Cambridge Scholars. We have Gates Millennium Scholars. Um, you know, we have, uh, I think uh, Lisa's working with uh, the Civic Newman. So like Danny and Elsa, we have, we have, we have achievers. And to, to what Lisa was saying about some of the other programming, uh, you know, we want you know community life to reflect uh, what our what our who our students you know are so the community that they come from, things they are passionate about. So this lower right picture is a fashion show. Uh, you know, we want you know we want the student space. You know that we have a space in here that they can smudge. You know, they can burn their sage, their cedar. They can talk about their ceremonial spiritual life there there you know there's sometimes there's a homesickness you know we we try to create that space for them because we want them to be able to to focus on why they're here and that's to graduate you know their academics come first and we try to you know provide programming not only for them but for everyone on campus and the really cool thing that happened this last October uh, indigenous people's day is we brought in Joy Harjo the US poet laureate and you know, it's you know, it's things like that. Like Lisa and I are, are really prideful about because if our students see us doing it, you know, we want them to one day feel like, hey, if if that's being done at MSU, and it, it's a very collaborative effort. You know, I had to work with a lot of people across campus, uh, with donors, poor, getting the mark, getting the word out. Like you know, culture, you know, it, it's still vibrant. Culture still matters. You know, fashion still matters. As the humanities letters still matter. So that's just kind of a glimpse. And you see some of the hand games here. Uh, uh, Jade right here, uh, this picture of this young woman, she got accepted into uh, grad school to be a registered dietitian. So, you know, it's really like Lisa said, we, we do a lot. And sometimes the ratio of the two of us to 700 is a little crazy, but, you know, it's fun. It's high energy. Uh, we work hard and we try to make sure that, you know, the work we do reflects what our students, we want them to be proud of it as well. So uh, that'll kind of let Lisa take it over. And I think hopefully I kind of hit on all that. So. Yeah, great, thank you. Um, yeah, so we'll keep moving forward. Uh, some scholarships, obviously, you know, scholarships come into a big play, big factor, you know, especially when you're trying to afford, you know, uh, dorms, you know, living costs, uh, you know, making sure that you have, you know, everything kind of situated. Um, you know, prior to coming to MSU. And so I think, you know, it's, it's important to get ahead of scholarships. Uh, you know, I think some of the biggest things a lot of our students are some of the biggest barriers that our students come into is, you know, being able to uh, afford dorms. I think dorms is the biggest cost that a lot of our students run into. And so I think, you know, getting ahead of the scholarship, uh, you know, if you can start writing scholarships now, if you haven't, I think those are uh, some of the biggest uh, opportunities that you may have uh, coming into MSU. And so I just wanted to mention uh, a couple of things, uh, a couple of different internal external opportunities. So when you think about internal uh, scholarship opportunities, if you're already accepted into MSU, I believe you can already jump into the CAT scholarships portal and you can fill out uh, the CAT scholarship. I think you just need your net ID. You can log in and then you jump in and fill out the blocks of information and it's an internal portal that'll bring scholarships to you. It, it's important that you mark that you're American Indian when you are, um, hopefully, uh, when you apply to MSU or when you apply to MSU, you mark your tribal affiliation. And so in addition to that, when you jump into the CAT scholarships portal, I do believe that they'll bring up uh, American Indian scholarships uh, that, that are available to you. And so I think uh, that's one internal opportunity that you have available to you. So I've been encouraging as many students to uh, fill out the CAT scholarship portal. Um, and at some points throughout the semester, I have financial aid contacting me saying, hey, do you know Amer any American Indian students 
that are looking for scholarships. We have funds that are sitting here that nobody applied for, and we're just looking to give them away. Otherwise, we lose out on that money. And so I'm routinely encouraging students to, you know, uh, jump in and, you know, fill out the CAT scholarship portal. Uh, I know I'm already always mentioning, Nick, hey, do you know any students who need this scholarship uh, funding? Are there in this department or that department? And so we're routinely trying to connect students with scholarship opportunities at MSU. Um, also, there are several department scholarships that are available. For example, the nursing program, the caring for our own program is a huge uh, opportunity for a lot of our students who want to go into nursing. Uh, that's just one example, but there are other other again, other opportunities around campus. I believe the cat scholarship portal will bring the co op uh, scholarship to you, or at least let you know about it. But if at the least you'll start hearing about some of the scholarships through the uh, cat scholarship. Um, when you are in high school, uh, I'm hopeful that you have guidance counselors that are helping you fill out the resident, the Montana Indian fee waiver. Um, so basically what that'll do, it's just a 1 page uh, scholarship and then you can turn that into uh, the, the financial aid office and it's for residents. And so if you're in the state of Montana, it's basically taking off your tuition, leaving just your fees uh, outstanding. So the Montana Indian fee waiver is huge. So I'm hopeful if you have a good counselor in your high school, they're helping you fill out this information and getting you set up. If if you haven't heard about that yet, you're more than welcome to connect with Nick, or, Nick and I, and we can get you this information about all any of this information right here that's available that we're talking about. Um, and so again, uh, just make sure this is on back of your mind when you're applying uh, to MSU, if you're applying to MSU. Um, if you're a non-resident, the Tribal Homeland, Tribal Homeland Scholarship is a huge opportunity as well. That gives you the opportunity to, um, again, there's this list of, of tribals, tribal nations that once called Montana home. So prior to any borders that, uh, you know, like Montana borders, uh, any tribal uh, tribal nation that once came into, MS or came into Montana, uh, you can take advantage of this tribal homeland scholarship. We have the Dakota tribes, we have all the Wyoming tribes, we have Idaho tribes, we have, of course, all the Montana tribes, but um, all the regional tribes can take advantage of this tribal homeland scholarship uh, waiver. And that is a huge thing too, because it takes off the out-of-state tuition and leaves the in-state tuition uh, for your for you to pay. So again, these scholarships are really, really awesome and they you know are a huge savings when it comes to applying to uh, MSU and trying to you know save some money um, or at least taking advantage of some of those things. Uh, external scholarships. Again, if you are a tribal enrolled member, take advantage or at least start looking into your uh, tribal uh, higher education department scholarships. So if you're part of the Blackfeet tribe, the Crow tribe, the Cheyenne tribe, uh, any tribe, there should be a tribal higher education department that is offering scholarships. Um, check into those scholarship opportunities and they may know of other scholarships as well. You can ask them, hey, do you have any uh, other uh, ideas about scholarships that I can apply to? Um, we have several students who are, uh, you know, part of their tribal higher education department. And sometimes we have, you know, um, um, a different uh, uh, entities coming to visit MSU and just trying to make sure that they are, uh, you know, visiting with their students like uh, Cheyenne tribe, they come and visit with their students, uh, the Crow tribe, they come and visit with their students. And so other external external opportunities, uh, Cobell scholarship is huge. We have a lot of uh, students who take advantage of that uh, opportunity. Uh, and then also the American Indian College Fund, the American Indian Education Foundation. There's a lot of external uh, opportunities out there for you. So get on top of those uh, scholarship opportunities. Uh, no, there's nothing you know keeping you from doing those, uh, rather just your time and effort. So make sure you are aware of those. Um, Kind of moving forward. So again, if you have any questions on this, we'll be able to connect with you on the outside of this meeting. Uh, Nick, do you want to talk a little bit about the American Indian Council? I know we have a, a little bit of time here, so maybe yeah. we'll just kind of rush it forward yeah. just a little bit. Uh, yeah, the American Indian Council is one of the oldest uh, student groups here on campus. Um, it kind of was buried alongside the vision for for our community. On um, the AIC, uh, is a, does a host of events, uh, community. Um, you know, his, uh, you know, uh, you know, like Lisa said, like we've mentioned, some of the great reformers, uh, some of the great business people, some of the great educators, you know, that come have done work in Indian country, not just in Montana, actually have really strong connections to this student group. You know, they've, they've helped organize the powwow, um, cultural engagement, outreach. I was, a, I served in the AIC as a student officer and, you know, I co-advised with Lisa. Um, 
couple of really cool things we've gotten to do in, do in the last couple of years. We've gotten to partner with our NCAA athletic teams and do uh, cultural presentations at a football game, a Bobcat football game. And it was a little bit more of a somber, you know, occasion, but we got to help bring awareness to uh, MM, missing and murdered indigenous peoples um, with the women's basketball team. It was actually a year ago this week. Um, that's one of the pictures you see. Uh, you know, and, and a lot of, you know, the experience that's seen, you know, sometimes they coming from reservations or urban areas, you know, it's the first time they really get to interact with this part of their cultural identity. And so it's, it's a lot of laughing, a lot of food, a lot of uh, mutual encouragement and accountability. So I, it's a great student group. Uh, there are other student groups. I'm actually going to be running off to hang out with one of the other student group nations, which is a, a more of like a youth group, faith-based group. Uh, we did have an MMIW club. Um, we do collaborate with like other student groups on campus. So, you know, that part of that social part of uh, campus life is important. I think that's also a, a highlight for a lot of students, you know, because they get to come in and, and be with their peers in a kind of a non-academic setting, but uh, it's great fun. And maybe I'll just kind of leave it at that. Uh, kind of moving forward, I guess the big thing that we have coming up fall 2021. So I think, you know, if you decide to come here at MSU, you're going to be helping us open and, and, you know, get into the comfort zone in the new American Indian Hall. Um, so this has been a long time coming, uh, you know, fundraising or the vision, you know, the vision, I think, started uh, back, you know, in, in the 90s, the early 90s. And so I think, you know, just. Um, Kind of moving forward, you know, it's it's been a long effort, you know, the the groups over the years. I, I think Walter Fleming, Wayne Stein, you know, they had a lot of impact and you know just the vision to carry this forward. And I'm kind of glad Wayne or Walter and Wayne stuck around and you know were able are able to see this uh, this nice big project come to fruition. There's been uh, hundreds of donors to um, help you know make sure that this hall is coming to you know fruition. Again, there's some you know live construction photos going on right there. You can see some of the model photos there. And so, um, you know, if you decide to show up to MSU, I think this is you know this is going to be one of the things that you're going to walk into a year from now. So you're going to be able to help us, you know, move into this and and make sure that we are uh, you know uh, servicing the students correctly. So we got a brand new facility coming up. We're looking forward to it. You know, there's going to be three classrooms. Of course, a nice big uh, student center, probably like four to five times bigger than our current student center. And so you'll get to, you know, move into this new facility with us. So we're looking forward to this part. And um, again, you know, I think, you know, it's it's something that we've been looking forward to. MSU has, has you know, taken a huge step in supporting American Indian students and knowing our numbers, like we mentioned previously, you know, they're growing ex exponentially. And so, you know, we need the space, we need, you know, the, the, you know, a home away from home. And so I think this is really it. And so we're looking forward to this and very excited about it. We're going to be moving in, I think, um, starting this summer, going into the early fall. And I think the grand opening or the, yeah, the, uh, when we actually open the hall, when we do like a nice uh, welcoming event is going to be Indigenous Peoples Day in October of 2021. So we're really looking forward to that. So I'm hoping you can all be there to help share that uh, experience with us. Uh, one of the last things I want to mention is the Native Pathways to Success Orientation. So if you decide or if you've already been accepted to MSU, uh, be on the lookout for the Native Pathways to Success Orientation um, invitation. So this is actually a few days before the fall semester, before the fall semester starts. And what happens is we uh, invite all new Native students, whether you're uh, fresh out of high school or you're a tribal college transfer student, we invite all new students to come to this orientation and it's a good opportunity for you to start creating a community right from the get-go. As soon as you, you know, step on campus, you walk into this room, as you guys can see, there's pictures there of students that, you know, stepped in and they just started forming relationships. And um, it's a really cool start uh, to, you know, to kick off your semester, to kick off your year, to kick off your academic journey. Um, and also in addition to that, uh, we you know, provide early move-in accommodations. So when you're trying to fight 3,000 other new freshmen moving into the dorms, uh, we are able to give you early move-in accommodations so you don't have to necessarily fight uh, you know, other people up the stairs or, or the elevators or that kind of thing. So um, it's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool opportunity. And then also you'll get to meet key people from around the campus, whether it's uh, Julie Watson Financial Aid, uh, Julian Collins uh, trio, uh, the co-op staff, the nursing co-op staff. Um, so you'll get to meet a whole host of individuals from around campus that will help you uh, through your academic journey, including Nick and I. Nick and I are there and we facilitate the entire 
um, orientation. So, but the cool thing is, it's really it's um, tailored to you as a new student coming into MSU. So, um, and also we provide book scholarships. If you're there, if you're attending the entire meeting, uh, we'll throw your name in a hat, and you can get you know a, a book scholarship with a you know, depending on how much funding we have available, but it's a really good opportunity. Again, um, we usually send out uh, invitations via email through the admissions office. So if your name's in in queue in the admissions office and we're expecting you to attend MSU, we'll be sending you an invitation and so you'll get that. And so um, we'll just need you to connect with us and let, just say, hey, you know, I'm planning to come to, uh, to MSU. I want to be a part of the Native Pathways to Success Orientation and we can get you signed up and get you lined up and get you ready to get here, uh, get you here early. And um, yeah, just jump in and you know get get two feet wet and just start running. So, in addition to the Na Native Pathways to Success orientation, I teach a US 101 first year seminar class that's specific to Native students, and so um, which is really cool. Again, it helps continue that community building uh, from Native Pathways. So, a lot of the students that are in Native Pathways sign up for my class, and it's also a core class, so you have to take this class at some point in time. So it's you know, why not, you know, take the native section? And so um, a lot of the students who are part of Native Pathways actually just sign up for my US 101 class and you actually get to just continue, you know, your friendships and, you know, that kind of thing uh, into the classroom. And so it's really cool to have that opportunity just to kind of flow into, you know, from the orientation straight into the classroom. So I'll be mentioning a little bit more about that. So if you decide to come to MSU or if you are coming to MSU, keep in mind the US 101 native section. And so if you want to ask more questions about that, I think, you know, there's opportunity there for that as well. Um, I, I understand that we don't really have a whole lot of uh, interaction here, but um, if you can uh, maybe take a picture or, or write down my email and Nick's email, and you can shoot us emails um, after this if you have additional questions, whether it's about, you know, the, the student center, the scholarships, uh, the New American Indian Hall, the Native Pathways to Success Orientation. Any any other questions that you might have, you know, just uh, go ahead and shoot me or Nick an email. You know, um, we're always available. Or if you want to give us a call, just look us up on the MSU website and shoot us a, you know, a quick phone call. Um, otherwise, I think that's all we have for tonight. Uh, and if, you know, if you have uh, any lingering questions that happen, you know, a week from now, a month from now, you know, don't hesitate to reach out. We're always here and available.